In the previous video, we looked at how you can verify a private key without actually needing to see it. So let's see how you can use this concept to implement an authentication scheme in an Ethereum dApp. The most common way that users interact with dApps right now is through Google Chrome extensions, the most popular one being MetaMask. The way that these Chrome extensions work is by injecting the Web3 object onto any page that you're browsing once the page loads. So even if I'm on Google.com, for example, I can refresh the page and I'll see that this MetaMask injected Web3 message is logged to my console. And if I want to get access to it, I could just type in Web3 and see the object there. Right now, I'm logged into account OX5C7. So I could do web3.f.coinbase to view the current account that's logged in. Likewise, if I open up the Parity client, so this is a Google Chrome extension that Parity just released that runs against a local Parity node, it does a similar thing. So if I refresh the page, I can see that Parity injects the Web3 object, and maybe we could do something more interesting like getting the block number, which right now is 3,345,703. Because the Web3 instance of the Ethereum wallet is injected onto the page, as a dApp developer, I will be able to access it on the global window object from my JavaScript code. So let's make a simple HTML page to see how this works. So I'm going to make a new directory called simple web and cd into it. And then I'm going to make a file called index.html and I'm going to open that in Atom. Next, I'm going to make this super simple. I'm just going to have an h1 tag that says example text. And then I'm going to add a script tag where we can write some JavaScript and I will just have this do console.log hello world for right now. And then to start this, we can do python-m simple HTTP server. And then I'm gonna start this on port 3000. So now that this is up, I can open Chrome and go to localhost 3000 and I should see my example text and my hello world log to the page. So if I tried to get direct access to that Web3 object, maybe I console.log window.web3 once the script runs, and if I refresh the page, I'll see that nothing gets logged. And again, this is because the Web3 object is not injected onto the page until the page loads. So most likely you're going to want to wrap your logic in some sort of global event listener. So event listener to the load event. And then you're gonna run a function here, and here we can console.log window.web3. And we'll see that the Web3 object does in fact get logged. And if we wanted to store this variable so that we could access it later, we could just make a variable here called user Ethereum client. And then instead of console.logging the window.web3 when the page loads, we'll just set the user Ethereum client equal to the window.web3. And if we want to access it, let's say, for example, I want to add a simple click listener on this example task so that every time I click it, it can do something Ethereum related. I can do document.querySelector um, and then h1.addEventListener for the click event and then function as event. And here we'll just console.log the, the user Ethereum client. So let's see how that would work. So if I refresh the page now, and I clicked on the example text, I could see now I have the Web3 object and I can access it programmatically in my code on any event that I want to. So one of the functions that you can call on this Ethereum client is the elliptic curve sign function that we saw in the previous video. So let's see how that might work. First, I need to create a message that is a known string that we can use to sign a message with and then recover the public key out of that signature. I'm just going to make it decipher TV for now. Next, instead of console.logging the user Ethereum client when we click on that h1 tag, instead I'm going to call user Ethereum client.f.sign. And this needs to take two arguments. First is going to be the public key that we want to sign with, which will be the Coinbase address from the client. And second will be the web will be the SHA3 hash of the message, which I can access off the window.web3 object there. And then the third argument will be a callback function, which will take an error and the data that is returned from this function, and we will just console.log data. So let's see how that works. So right now I refresh the page. I'm going to click on example text and notice what's going to happen. Instead of simply signing this with the user's private key, MetaMask is instead going to intercept the RPC call and it's going to pop up a notification for the user. 
that says, hey user, this site is asking you to sign this hashed message. In this case, it's just the SHA-3 hash of Decipher TV. But in theory, this could be anything, potentially even something dangerous. And the user will then have to decide whether or not they're going to sign it or not. In this case, he will click sign. And we'll see that this message that's returned is that signed hash. And we can use this hash to verify that the person who signed this message does in fact have access to the private key of the public key that is sitting in their browser. So this is a bad workflow to have somebody have a pop-up window and have them sign a message every time you want to verify their identity. Maybe a better idea would be to take this and just store it into the browser cookies. So if you go to application, cookies, and localhost, you can see all the cookies that are stored in the browser from this domain. Right now we don't have any. But when they sign the message and we get the callback, instead of just console.logging the data, one of the things we could do is say, um, let's maybe make a variable signed off message and set that equal to the data that's returned and say document.cookie equals signed off message equals and then plus the signed off message like that. So we're going to set a cookie in their variable with the key signed off message and the value being the off message that is returned from the f sign function. So if we refresh the page now and I click example text and I assign the message, we don't see anything, but if we go to application cookies, we can see that this hash is now stored in the browser as the signed off message. So any time that we want to verify the user's identity, we can simply look in the cookies at the signed off message. We can look at the Web3 object that MetaMask injected and see the private key, or the public key rather, and then we can try to recover from the function and say, did the private key of this public address actually sign this message, yes or no? So what does the code actually look like to then verify the public key from this cookie that's stored in the user's browser? Well, the only way I've found to do this so far is exactly the way that I showed in the previous video, which is using the Ethereum JS util npm module. Because this is just an HTML page and not running in the context of a node environment, this won't actually work, but I want to show you what the code would just look like anyway. So like, just like we did before, we would store a variable called sig decoded equal to futil dot from RPC sig, and then read that cookie out of the browser. Then we could run a function that is futil dot ec recover, and we will pass in the message that we know the user signed, right? This message right here, and then sig decoded dot v, sig decoded dot r, sig decoded dot s, and we can store that as a variable recovered pub. Then we could make another variable recovered address, which would be futil.pub to address on the recovered pub and make that a hexadecimal string. And then finally, the authentication logic to see if the user is logged in or not would just look like this. It would say, is the user Ethereum client.f.coinbase, which is the public address that the Ethereum client has injected in, equal to the recovered address from the signed auth message that lived in the user's browser cookies? Now, if you wanted to actually run this code, there are basically two different approaches that you can use. You can either verify the browser cookie client side, or you can verify it server side. If you are verifying it client side, then chances are the client side application that you're running has to be some sort of framework that incorporates NPM modules into it. In this case, I highly encourage using the create react library from Facebook. It is the simplest way to create a React.js app in the NPM ecosystem where you could just simply require the Ethereum JS util library and verify this authentic identity client side. If you want to do it server side, I would encourage using Express.js, which is just a very simple library for running Node on the server. So you could run this futil function and verify the browser cookie on the server side and just return either a true or false or something like that. And I will do some more in-depth videos about the entire DAP development process later in the series, but hopefully for now, this is enough to get you started.